Hello and welcome to the Office for Human Research Protections webinar entitled 45 CFR Subpart C Basics. My name is Julia Gorey and I'm a policy analyst in OHRP's Division of Policy and Assurances. I hope you'll find this webinar informative. Subpart C has its roots in the reforms that emerged as a result of the historical exploitation of prisoners the 1949 Nuremberg Code, and the 1964 Declaration of Helsinki. In 1976, the National Commission for the Protection of Human Subjects in Biomedical and Behavioral Research wrote the report Research Involving Prisoners, which would become the foundation of 45 CFR 46 Subpart C. In that report, the National Commission opines there are two basic ethical dilemmas concerning the use of prisoners as research subjects. The first, whether prisoners bear a fair share of burdens and receive a fair share of the benefits of the research. And secondly, whether prisoners are, in the words of the Nuremberg Code, so situated as to be able to exercise free power of choice. That is, whether prisoners can truly give voluntary informed consent to participate in research. So what's different about subpart C? Well, the first thing is that the exemptions don't apply. They simply don't apply. You cannot have prisoner research that's exempt. Secondly, there must be a prisoner representative on the IRB, and we'll discuss more about that in a minute. The study must be reviewed, and it must fit into a 306 category of permissible research. The IRB must send a subpart C certification request to OHRP and wait for a response before initiating research involving prisoners. And I've listed there the guidance document that addresses that. Subpart C is triggered regardless of when a subject becomes a prisoner, whether at enrollment or later on, for example, during follow-up. And finally, the emergency waiver of informed consent is not permitted for research involving prisoners. Now let's look at the regulatory definition of a prisoner in Section 303C. Prisoner means any individual involuntarily confined or detained in a penal institution. It includes subjects sentenced under a criminal or civil statute, individuals detained in other facilities by virtue of statutes or commitment procedures which provide alternatives to criminal prosecution or incarceration in a penal institution. And lastly, it includes individuals detained pending arraignment, trial, or sentencing. So as you can see, under the regulatory definition and as interpreted by OHRP, the definition of a prisoner is broader and more complex than merely a person serving time in jail. So what kind of facilities are typically involved in studies that involve prisoners? Well, of course, a percentage of these studies involve a residential jail or prison facilities that are typically thought of as housing prisoners. However, this is not the majority of subpart C research that is certified to OHRP today. More typically, studies certified to OHRP involve some sort of substance abuse treatment facility or other transitional housing facility. And they frequently examine some aspect of substance abuse, reintegration into the community, service utilization, or social or behavioral therapy. Now bear in mind, if a subject becomes a subpart C prisoner after enrollment, the study must be reviewed by the IRB under subpart C. It must be determined to fall into one of the permissible categories, and it must be certified to OHRP. There is one exception to this, as described in OHRP's guidance on research involving prisoners. The IRB chair can grant temporary approval for the subject to remain on the study if it's deemed to be in the subject's best interest. Subpart C prisoners can occur in many different contexts, particularly in studies involving co-occurring disorders and overlapping populations. So studies might look like this without the word prisoner or prison in the title. Opportunity for prevention and engagement for HIV-infected drug users. Treatment of PTSD in residents in battered women's shelters. 
a brief intervention for drug-using rural women at high risk for HIV and HCV, ending chronic homelessness through permanent housing, integrated treatment, case management, and peer support, or surveillance, epidemiology, and end results, pathology, data linkage, a feasibility study. So who is not a prisoner, as interpreted by OHRP under 45 CFR subpart C? Well, subjects that have voluntarily entered some kind of substance abuse treatment are not prisoners. Subjects who are released from prison to some type of halfway house or step-down facility are typically not viewed as prisoners. Persons who are court adjudicated to attend non-residential treatment programs as alternatives to incarceration while living in the community are not subpart C prisoners. So in other words, if you have subjects who are residing in the community and attending some kind of treatment three days a week from noon till three o'clock, but then they go back home to the, the community, they are not considered subpart C prisoners. On the other hand, if those subjects were residing in a substance abuse treatment facility, as a term of their sentence, they would be considered subpart C prisoners. Subjects who are civilly committed due to danger to themselves or others are not prisoners. And lastly, subjects who are handcuffed are not considered prisoners. So if the only research intervention or interaction in a study examines a person who is handcuffed and nothing more, then that's not going to come under the rubric of subpart C. The IRB must have a prisoner representative in fulfillment of 46 section 304. Now this prisoner representative needs to be on the IRB any time a subpart C study is reviewed, not only for initial review but also for continuing review or the review of any amendments. They need to be a full voting member of the IRB, not a consultant, and they need to be listed on the roster. You know, institutions can handle this a couple of ways. They can either have two rosters, one which is used for subpart C review, or they can simply note on the primary roster who is serving the function as the prisoner representative and that their presence only counts for quorum during subpart C review. Who can serve in this function? This has to be one of the most commonly asked questions about subpart C. It's difficult to give a uniform blanket response because it does depend on the type of research being done and the type of prisoners that are involved. OHRP guidance says that the person should have a close working knowledge of prison conditions and the life of the prisoner. It could be a former prisoner. It could be a social worker or an advocacy member. Again, it will vary enormously depending on the type of research being done. Now let's look at the permissible categories of research for subpart C. There are four primary categories and a very narrow fifth one that we're going to discuss. These categories are somewhat overlapping and know that OHRP does reserve the authority to recategorize a study that might be certified and found to be in an inappropriate choice of category. Category one and two are both limited to no more than minimal risk. And category one is a very broad category, a study of possible causes, effects, and processes of incarceration and criminal behavior. Now, this category includes a lot of substance abuse research. It often involves overlapping populations and co-occurring disorders, a lot of HIV and AIDS work. And this is because there's a very close reciprocal relationship between the research being done and the criminal justice community. Now, category two is a very narrow category, a study of prisons as institutional structures or prisons as incarcerated persons, prisoners as incarcerated persons. Examples here might be a study examining a uh, diet or the, the, the food of a given prison, the provision of services in a given institution, or a smoking cessation study in a certain jail. 
Category 3 and Category 4 have no ceiling on risk. Category 3 is a very small category, research on conditions particularly affecting prisoners as a class. There's no requirement for a benefit. And secretarial consultation is required. So what exactly does this mean? Well, a secretarial consultation is a formal administrative process requiring a panel of experts to be convened to review the study and issue their opinion as to whether or not the study can proceed. It's a very serious, a very lengthy process. Category 4 may trigger the need for a secretarial consultation. It's research on practices, both innovative and accepted, which have the intent and reasonable probability of improving the health or the well-being of the subject. Now, a secretarial consultation is going to be triggered where prisoners are assigned to control groups, which may not benefit from the research and understand that OHRP interprets a control group to be treatment as usual, standard of care, or placebo. So let's see how this might actually play out. Marijuana abusing attention deficit hyperactivity disorder teens at amoxetine treatment. The objective of this study is to determine whether administering atomoxetine in a therapeutic setting improves ADHD symptoms, retention, and progress in substance abuse treatment. The study assigns prisoners to a standard of care comparison arm. So there is a category four problem here. There's a control group. However, there's also a problem with trying to recategorize the study because category one is limited to no more than minimal risk. This is a greater than minimal risk study. So this is an example of a study that's not approvable without a secretarial consultation. Now there is a very narrow fifth category of permissible research, the epidemiologic waiver of June 2003. Despite the word waiver, the study must still be reviewed under subpart C and certified to OHRP. This is reserved for studies in which the sole purposes are to describe the prevalence or incidence of a disease or to, to, to study potential risk factor associations for a disease. The study has to be no more than minimal risk and prisoners can't be the sole focus. Importantly, know that the IRB must still certify the study to OHRP. And now we come to section 305. 305 is where we find the substantive review criteria that the IRB must make for each subpart C study. The first criteria is that the study has to fall into a permissible category of research. Now we've just covered this and in red I've noted the concern that's addressed by these criteria. Secondly, possible advantages associated with the research participation of the prisoner are not of such a magnitude that his or her ability to weigh the risks is impaired. The risks are commensurate with risks that would be accepted by non-prisoners. Selection of subjects within the prison is fair and immune from arbitrary intervention by prison authorities or other prisoners. The information that's presented is presented in a language which is understandable to the subject population. There's assurance that parole boards will not consider research participation in parole decisions. Prisoners are informed in advance that participation in the research will not affect parole. And lastly, adequate provision has been made for follow-up care. Now importantly, not all of these points are going to be relevant to the whole spectrum of research involving prisoners. For example, number four, which involves the selection of subjects within the prison being fair and immune from arbitrary intervention, is not going to be relevant for subjects who become prisoners after enrollment. Likewise, number six, which involves parole boards, is not going to be relevant if there is no parole board involved. In these situations, the IRB should note that the criteria was discussed and found to not be relevant to the study. I also want to point to Section 305C, the actual certification requirement. This is fulfilled by the institution certifying the study to OHRP. A few more words regarding the actual Subpart C certification. Please send your materials to Subpart C at hhs.gov. 
certification is required only for HHS conducted or supported research. If your institution has an extended FWA and reviews a prison study that is not HHS conducted or supported, the IRB is obligated to review the study under subpart C, but does not need to send the study to OHRP for certification. The certification process functions as a loop. The IRB reviews and makes the findings. The institution sends the certification letter and accompanying, accompanying documentation to OHRP. OHRP reviews the materials and determines that the category is appropriate or recategorizes the study or determines that the study does not fit into a category. And OHRP sends the authorization letter back to the institution and to the funding program officer. In the materials that you send, please be sure to include your contact information, the FWA number and the IRB registration number of the review in IRB, the date of subpart C review, the protocol and consent and assent forms, and the name of that funding program officer. Also, please be sure to list the IRB's choice of 306 permissible category. Also include the grant and the grant number.